welcome to Prasam Science Academy classes and we are about to start uh, solving the question paper of 2024 that is the first set 31 1 and this is the subset 1 of the first set so let's start with the section A now this section consists of 20 marks of 1 marks each and to begin with the first one it says that if the sum of zeros of the polynomial p of x is equal to 2x square minus kx uh, k into root 2x plus 1 is 2 we have to <coughs> find the value of k now let's write down the polynomial the polynomial is this is question number one and the polynomial is p of x which is 2x square minus k into 2x plus 1. Now it's given that the sum of zeros. So here coefficient of x square that is a is 2. Coefficient of x that is b is minus k root 2 and constant is c. Now it's given that the sum of the zeros is root 2. So let's write down the sum of zeros. Now the sum of zeros is given its root 2 and we know that the sum of zeros is given by minus p by a so that is equal to root 2. Let's replace the values of p and a. So b is minus k root 2 upon a which is 2 so that is equal to root 2. Now root 2 root 2 we can strike them out minus of minus is plus of k is equal to 2 so our answer is b for the first one moving on to the second one it says that the probability of a player winning a game is 0.79 then what is the probability of this losing the game now the probability of winning and losing are the complementary events that is probability of an event and probability of not e we know that it's equal to one so here the probability of winning so even is probability of winning and not e is probability of losing that is equal to one so we are given with the probability of winning which is 0 0.79 plus probability of losing which is equal to one so probability of losing is equal to one minus 0 0.79 and 1 minus 0 0.79 is 1, 2, this is 0 0.21. So D is the answer. Point to 0.21. Let's move on to the third question. And for the third one, so we are about to solve the third one. For the third one, it's given that. For the third one, if roots of the equation are real and equal. Now, this is a quadratic equation. Ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. And we know that for the real and equal roots, discriminant is equal to 0. And discriminant is given by b square minus 4 is equal to c is equal to 0. And I can write it as... So b square is equal to 4ac and I can write it as b square upon 4 is equal to ac and this maths with the condition option c that is ac is equal to b square upon 4. So ac is equal to b square upon 4. <coughs> that is option c is the answer for the third one. Let's move on to for the question number four. For question number four, just given that in an AP, the first term for question number four, the first term is A is seven and nth term is 84. And the sum of n terms is given, we have to find the value of n. So I can write what is given A is equal to seven, nth term is equal to 84, and sum of n terms is 2093 by 2. Now we know the formula for the sum of n terms which is n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d which is equal to 2093 by 2. 
and now I can write it as 2a means this can be split up into a plus a that is a plus a plus n minus 1 in 2d is equal to 2093 by 2. Now a plus n minus 1 into d is the nth term. So nth term is 84. So I can write here n by 2 and a is 7. So 7 plus nth term, nth term is 84. So this is 84 is equal to 2093 by 2. This 2 and 2 can be striked off. So n into 91 is equal to 2093 and n is equal to 2093 by 91 which gives us the value as 23. So 23 is the answer for part 4. Moving on to the fifth one of this page. Well, for the fifth one, it's given that two positive integers p and q. So p is equal to 18 a square b is power 4. So p can be written as this is 3 square into 2 into a square into b raised power 4. And the q is equal to 20 q. So 20 q is 4 into 5, which is 2 square into 5 into this is a q into b square. And we have to find the LCM of PQ. So this is equal to so the common is 2, and we have to take the greater value 2 square and the left one 3 squared into 5. Among common A, we have to take AQ, and among these, we have to take B raised power 4. So this is equal to 2 square is 4, 4 into 9, is 36 into 5 is 180 a cube b raised power 4. So 180 a cube b raised power 4, that is, d should be the answer for this one. Thank you for watching. Let's move on to the question number 6. Okay, so we are about to solve the MCQs from question number 6 to 15. And let's start with the first one, that is 6. It's given that AD is a median of triangle ABC with vertices A, B, and C. Given, we have to find the length of AD. So this is the MCQ6, and there is a triangle ABC. So this is triangle ABC. Its vertices are A is 5, comma, minus 6, B is 6, comma, 4, and C is 0, comma, 0. This is at the origin. And AD is the median. So AD is the median. We have to find the length of the AD. So let's find the coordinates of D. Since AD is the median, so D is the midpoint of B and C. And coordinates of D. Because D is the midpoint, so coordinates of D will be given by X1 plus X2 by 2 upon Y1 plus Y2 by 2. And these are the coordinates X1, Y1 and X2, Y2. So X1 is 6 plus 0 by 2, this is 4 plus 0 by 2, which gives us 6 by 2, 4 by 2, and that is equal to 3 by 2. So the coordinates of D are 3 by 2, and now we have to find the length AD, which we can easily find out by using the distance formula. So distance formula is x2 minus x1, the whole square, plus y2 minus y1 the whole square and x2 here is 3 x these are x1 y1 and x2 y2 that i'm going to take so this is 3 minus 5 this is 3 minus 5 the whole square plus y2 2 minus of minus 6 so 2 minus of minus 6 the whole square this is negative 2 the whole square 2 minus of minus 6 is 8 so 8 square under root which is 4 plus 64 this is equal to 68 units so 68 units is the correct answer which is the first one and now let's move on to question number seven okay for question number seven <coughs> okay so for 
question number seven is given that secant theta minus tan theta is equal to n we have to find the value of secant theta plus tan theta so this is question number seven it's given secant theta minus tan theta is equal to n we have to find the value of secant theta plus tan theta so i'm going to square on both sides so square on both sides we get this is secant theta minus tan theta the whole square is equal to m square <clears throat> or rather let me just use the identity we know that one plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta so secant squared theta minus tan squared theta is equal to one and this is now a square minus b square so a square minus b square is a plus b this is a and this is b so a plus b into a minus b is equal to one now for us secant theta minus tan theta is known so secant theta plus tan theta into m is equal to one which gives us secant theta plus tan theta is equal to one by m so our answer is one by m which is option c let's move on to question number eight Okay, for question number eight, it's given that from the data 1, 4, 7, 9, 16, 21, 25, if all the even numbers are removed. So 1, 4, 7, 9, 16, 21, and 25. And if the even numbers are removed, that is 4 and 16, we are left with 1, 7, 9, 21, and 25. We have to find the probability of the prime number so the prime numbers are seven seven is the only prime number one is neither prime nor composite so the probability of prime number here is the total numbers are five out of them one is prime so this is one by five and moving on question number nine it's given that for some data, the observations x1, x2 till xn with the respective frequency. So it's given that x1 has frequency, let's say f1, x2 is some observation, it has frequency f2, and x3 is some observation which has frequency f3 till it goes on xn which has frequency fn. We have to find the value of this and now we know that mean is equal to sigma fi into xi by sigma fi so let's find out try to find out the value of this this is we have to find the value of sigma this is fi into xi minus x bar and this summation goes from i is equal to 1 to n so i can write it as summation fi into xi minus summation i is equal to 1 to n fi into x bar now uh, we know that this is the formula for the mean and if i cross multiply this so this gives me sigma fi into xi if i cross multiply this this is equal to sigma fi into x bar so instead of this i can write sigma fi into x bar and minus one to n fi into x bar so this gets cancelled and the value is zero so our answer for this one is zero which is moving on to question number nine for question number nine For question number 10 we are done with question number 9 for question number 10 is given that zeros of the polynomial x square plus px plus q are twice the zeros of the polynomial we have to find the value of p so we are on question number 10 so it's given that 
there are two polynomials and the first polynomial is this is question number 10 first polynomial is x square plus px plus q and let's say its zeros are alpha and beta and its zeros are twice the zeros of this polynomial so next polynomial is 4x square minus 5x minus 6 let's try to split this using or factorize this so i can write it as 4x square minus 6 four that is 24 so the factors of 24 i can take as uh, 8 and 3 so minus 8 and 3 so this is minus 8x plus 3x minus 6 and here the common is 4x so x minus 2 the common is 3 x minus 2 this is 4x plus 3 in x minus 2 so i have these zeros x is equal to minus 3 by 4 and x is equal to 2 and it's given that this polynomial has the zeros twice so if the let's take the twice alpha is twice of the first zero so this is minus 3 by 2 so the first zero of this polynomial is minus 3 by 2 and beta is the twice of the second zero which is x is equal to 2 so beta is equal to 4 beta is equal to 4 and alpha is equal to minus 3 by 2 are the zeros of this polynomial we have to find the value of so the value of p in this case i can use the sum of the zeros is given by minus b by a alpha is minus 3 by 2 plus beta is 4 is equal to minus p a is 1 in this case this is a and this is p. so 2 minus 3 plus 8 is equal to minus p and this is 5 by 2 is equal to minus p which gives us p is equal to negative 5 by 2 so negative 5 by 2 is the answer that is the option a and moving on to the next one that is question number 11 we are done with question number 10 so moving on to question number 11 it's given that distance between the points is 15 units then what are the values of x so for question number 11 uh, let's say these points are a 3 comma minus 5 and b this is x minus b so the distance between two points these two points is denoted by a b which is equal to 15 units now this distance can be positive or negative that is either in the positive x direction or this either in the negative x direction so we are going to use plus minus sign here and db we can find out using the distance formula which is x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square is equal to plus minus 15. so remember we have to take plus minus 15 as per the direction so x2 minus x1 which is x minus 3 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 is minus 5 minus 5 minus of minus 5 the whole square which becomes 0 this whole is under root is equal to plus minus 15 so this is 0 and we are left with x minus 3 the whole square under root is equal to plus minus 15 so this gets cancelled so x minus 3 is equal to 15 or x minus 3 is equal to negative 15 so this which gives us x is equal to 18 and x is equal to minus 12. So minus 12 and 18 should be the option. So minus 12 and 18. This is our answer. That is B. Okay, let's move on to the question number 12, which is from introduction to trigonometry. And it's given that value of cos alpha plus beta is zero okay so this is the question question number 12 it's given that cos of alpha plus beta is equal to zero this is question number 12. now on the right hand side we know that this is cos so 
we will just write one angle uh, that has cos as zero. So we know that cos of 90 is zero. So that means if these two are equal, that means alpha plus beta is equal to 90 degree. So alpha plus beta is 90 degree. Now we have to find the value of cos of alpha plus beta by two. So cos alpha plus beta is 90 by two is 45. So cos 45 is, we know that it's one by root two. So A is the correct option. Moving on to question number 13. So question number 13 says, uh, solid sphere is cut into two hemispheres. So let's see, this is question number 13. And this is a solid hemisphere that has the radius R. Sorry, a solid sphere that is cut into two hemispheres. So these are the two hemispheres and their radius will remain as it is. But their total surface area is now. Its surface area is 4 pi r square. This surface area is 2 pi r square and this circle is pi r square. So its total surface area is 3 pi r square. Similarly, its surface area is 3 pi r square. We have to find the ratio of the surface area of sphere to that of two hemispheres. So that means we have to find the ratio of the sphere the two hemispheres that is 3 pi r square so this is 3 pi r square which is 4 pi r square by 6 pi r square this gets cancelled and this is equal to 2 by 3 so the required ratio is 2 is to 3 so 2 is to 3 that is the option c is the correct answer for question number 14 the middlemost observation of every data arranged in order is called median now the volume of the largest right circle cone that can be carved out of uh, from a solid cube of edge two centimeter. We are on to question number fifteen. Okay, so this is question number fifteen. We have to find the volume of largest right circle cone that can be carved out from a solid cube of edge 2 centimeter so let's say this is a solid cube of edge 2 centimeter and we know that for a cube all the edges are equal so this is a cube and from this cube we have to carve out the largest right circular cone so largest right circular cone that can be carved out will be like this we have to find the volume so the radius of this cone would be half of the edge the diameter of the cone would be the edge and the radius would be half of the edge so edge is two centimeters so that means the radius of the cone is one centimeter so the radius of the cone is one centimeter and we have to find the volume so now the height height of this cone would be also the edge so height of the cone will be the edge so this is the height of the cone that would be equal to the edge so height of the cone is two centimeter and we have to find the volume and we know the volume is given by one by three pi r square edge let's put in the respective value this is pi into r is one square is one height is two so this is two by three cubic centimeter two by three pi cubic centimeter so two by three pi cubic centimeter that is option d okay so with this we have done the mcqs from question number 6 to 15 let's move on to the next question thank you for watching okay for <laughs> section a uh, these are the MCQs and we are going to solve the MCQs from question number 16 to 20. And for question number 16, it says that two dies are rolled together. And we know that when two dies are rolled together, total outcomes are it's six square, 36. And we have to get the probability of 
uh, the sum of numbers on the two dice is either two, three, or four, two, three, or five. Let's say these are the outcomes of the first die. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. And outcomes of the second die are one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we will get some two only when it's one and one, one on the first die and one on the other die. And for three, either it's two on the first and one on the second, or one on the first and two on the second. And for five, we will get the sum of numbers five. Either it's one four, or either it's two three, or either it's three two, or either it's four one. So the total outcomes for uh, sum two is one, and for sum three is two and for some five it's four so the total outcomes for getting sum of numbers on the two dice as two three or five is seven and the total outcomes are 36 so the probability of getting sum as two three or five is equal to favorable outcomes divided by the total outcomes that is seven by 36. So our answer is 7 by 36 for question number 16. And let's move on to question number 17. For question number 17, it's given that the center of a circle is at 2 comma 0. So this is question number 17. And let's say this is a circle with center. Let's say this is the diameter and the center is 2 comma 0. And it's 1 and is at 6 comma 0 we have to find the other end so let's say other end be x comma y coordinates and now because this is the center so this is the midpoint of this and uh, let's say the diameter a b and the center is o and if we use the if we use the midpoint formula it gives us the coordinates of the midpoint x comma y is given by x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Now, these are the coordinates of the center which are 2 comma 0. So this is 2 comma 0 and x1 is 6, x2 is x, y2, y1 is 0 and y2 is y. And if we equate this, so this is equal to 2 is equal to 6 plus x by 2 which gives us 6 plus x is equal to 2 and x is equal to minus sorry this is 4 and x is equal to minus 2 so x is minus 2 and this is 0 which gives us y is equal to 0 so the coordinates of the other end are minus 2 comma 0 and c is the correct option for this Moving on to question number 18. Okay, for question number 18, it's given that in the given figure, the graphs of two linear equations are given. So we have to check the pair of the linear equations as. So if we produce these uh, lines in this direction, they are going to intersect at some point because these are not parallel so this means if they intersect that will have unique solution and the equations has unique solution so these will be consistent so our option is option a consistent with unique solution and moving on to question number 19 which 19 and 20 these are the statements of assertion followed by a statement of reason R. We have to choose the correct option. Okay, for the first one, that is question number 19, the tangents drawn at the endpoints of a circle are parallel. That is true. Because if we draw the tangents at the endpoints of the diameter, let's say this is the diameter AB. And if we draw a tangent here, let's say XY. And 
Okay, let's say the other tangent is x dash y dash. So x y is parallel to x dash y dash because the radius is perpendicular tangent at the point of contact. So this is 90 degree, this is 90 degree. These are alternate angles and these alternate angles are equal. So that means the lines are parallel. So this is true. And the reason given here is diameter of a circle is the longest chord. The diameter of a circle is the longest chord, which is true, but this is not the correct reason. So this is not the correct reason. So we can say that <coughs> assertion is true, but reason R is false. So for this, our option should be C. Mm -hmm. Moving on to next one. <coughs> Okay, for the next one, okay, for this, uh, I have selected the wrong option. Here, the assertion is true and diameter of circle is also true, but this is not the correct explanation of A. So, both assertion A and reason R are true, but reason R is not the correct explanation of A. So, that means our option for this should be B. And moving on to the question number 20, which says that it is the graph of a polynomial touch x axis at only one point, then the polynomial cannot be a quadratic polynomial, which is false. Because if let's say a graph of the polynomial is if it's a quadratic, it can be like this, which touch the x axis at one point, and this is the graph of the quadratic polynomial. So this option is false and polynomial of a degree n can have at most n zeros. This is true because let's say if the degree of a polynomial is 2, that, mean, that means it can have either 0, 1 and 2 uh, zeros or the solution of that equation, which means which is which it can have at most n zeros. If the degree is n so if the degree is n it can have at most n zeros so the assertion is false but the reason is true and for this our correct option should be so assertion a is false but reason r is true so that means our option for this is d so d is the correct option for this <coughs> With this, we are done with the first section, that is section A, and let's move on to section B. Thank you for watching. Okay, for section B, this section consists of five questions of two marks each, and we have to solve the first one, that is the question number 21. We have to solve the following system of linear equations. So this is question number 21 and we are going to solve the system of linear equation 7x minus 2y is equal to 5 and 8x plus 7y is equal to 15. So we can solve them by either of the method that is the substitution of the elimination. I'm going to use the elimination method. So I'm going to multiply this equation with 8 and this equation with 7. So multiplying this equation with 8 gives me 56x minus 16y is equal to 40. And multiplying the second equation with 7, we get it's 56x plus 49y is equal to 75, that is 3505. And if we subtract these equations, this gives us, so this is minus 16 minus 49, which is 15 and 4, 5 and 6 minus 65y and this is equal to 105 minus 40 is 65. This is minus 65. This is y. Now y is equal to 1. So y is 1 and if we put y in first equation that gives me 7x minus 2 into 1 is equal to 5. So 7x is equal to 7 and x is equal to 1. So the value of x and y is 1 
then we have to verify if our answer. So to verify the answer, we can put the x and y in the first equation and check if the LHS and RHS are equal. So this is equal to 7 into 1. We are doing the verification for x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. So 7 into 1 is equal to 5, which is equal to RHS. So the uh, solutions x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 satisfies the first equation. And for the second equation is 8 into 1 plus 7 into 1, which is equal to 15, which is equal to RHS. So we have solved and verified the answer. Let's move on to the question number, next question number, which is 22. For question number 22, Okay, for question number 22, it's given that in a pack of 52 playing cards. So this is question number 22. And it's given that total cards are 52. And one card is lost. So if one card is lost, though, that means we have total cards with us is 51. We have to find the probability of queen of heart. So probability of queen of heart. One card is lost and the lost card is a black card. So this black card doesn't affect the probability of drawing the queen of heart because heart is of red color. Hearts are of red color and we have only one queen of, of heart. So our option is answer is one by 51 total cards of 51. One is lost and Q of heart is 1. So 1 by 51 is the answer for question number 22. Let's move on to question number 23. For question number 23, we have to evaluate the trigonometric equation that is given. So we are on to question number 23. So we are I'm going to evaluate the first section which is 2 root 2 cos 45 into sine 30 plus 2 root 2 cos 30. Now let's put in the respective values of these angles. Cos 45 is 1 by root 2 sine 30 is half. 2 root 2 into cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So this is 1 and this is root 6. So our answer is 1 plus root 6. Okay. This is actually 2 root 3. So this is 2 root 3 into cos 30. So 2 root 3 into cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So that means this is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So 2 is the final answer for part A of question number 23. And moving on to question number part B of the same question, we have to verify LHS is equal to RHS where A and B, angle A and angle B are given. So let's consider LHS which is sine of a plus b so sine of a plus b is 60 plus 30 mm -hmm. which is sine 90 and sine 90 is 0 now let's consider rhs so rhs is equal to is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b sine a sine a is sine 60 cos 30 cos 60 and sine 30 let's put in their values now sine 60 is root 3 by 2 cos 30 is root 3 by 2 cos 60 is half sine 30 is half so this is 3 by 4 plus 1 by 4 which is 4 by 4 and that's equal to 1 Hence, we have verified that LHS is equal to RHS. Okay, sorry. 
here psi 90 is not 0 but psi 90 is 1 so LHS is equal to RHS moving on to question number 24 Okay, for question number 24 is given that in the given quadrant, in the given figure A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral and diagonal B, D bisects angle B and D both. So that means, let's say this is angle 1, this is angle 2, this is angle 3 and this is angle 4. And for question number 4, it's given that B, D bisects angle B and angle D that is which means angle 1 is equal to angle 2 and angle 3 is equal to angle 4 so we have to prove that triangle ABD is similar to triangle CBD so let's take these triangles and in these triangles angle 1 is equal to angle 2 angle 3 is equal to angle 4 angle 1 is in CBD and CBD is angle 2 is in angle CBD and this is a ABD. So these are the corresponding angles of both these triangles, and this is because BD bisects angle B and angle D. Now BD, so we have to prove that these are similar. So we can say that by AA rule, because if two angles are, uh, two of the corresponding angles of the triangles are equal, then the angles are similar. So by AA, if two angles are similar, then obviously the third, two angles are equal, two of the corresponding angles are equal, then obviously the third angle, the third corresponding angles are also equal. So by AA similarity rule, we can say that triangle ABD, is similar to triangle CBD and if these triangles are similar so uh, now for the second part we have to prove that AB is equal to AB is equal to BC now these triangles are similar also these triangles are congruent the triangle ABD is also congruent to triangle CBD because these two angles, corresponding angles are equal. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2, angle 3 is equal to angle 4, and BD is equal to BD common. So they are congruent by SASA. So this is because BD by 6, angle B and angle D and BD is equal to BD because it's common. So we can say that by ASA congruence rule, these two triangles are congruent and which gives us uh, AB. So AB is equal to AB is equal to the corresponding side is BC. So AB is equal to BC, reason being they are the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Okay, so we are done with question number 24 and moving on to question number 25, we will discuss both the parts, the part A and part B of question number 25. Okay, for question number 25, we have to prove that 5 minus 2 root 3 is an irrational. So this being question number 25. Now 5 minus 2 root 3 is an irrational number. We have to prove that. Let's assume that 5 minus 2 root 3 is a rational number. So let 5 minus 2 root 3 be a rational number. And if 5 minus 2 root 3 is a rational number, so that means I can write it in the form 5 minus 2 root 3 is equal to A upon B, where A and B are co primes. That means that they do not have any other common factor except 1. So A and B are co primes. That is, they are not divisible by any other number, any other common number except 1. So these are co primes. And we have to make sure that B is not equal to 0. 
So that means if I uh, try to simplify this, I can write it as root three is equal to a upon b minus five. And this has to divided by minus two, which gives me the root three is equal to, I can write it as, uh, this is minus a minus, let's take b LCM here. So this is a minus 5b upon b divided by 2 is 2b. So root 3 can be written as 5b minus a upon 2b. So root 3 is equal to 5b minus a upon 2b. So here this LHS is rational here, LHS is rational, but R and RHS, this is, but RHS, sorry, LHS is irrational, but RHS is rational. And it's given that, so if, if we take the equality or if we consider this equation, so if this is ir irrational, it should be equal to something that is irrational. So that means, but here it's LHS is rational and RHS is rational, which is not, which should not happen. So that means that our assumption is wrong. So if our assumption is wrong and our assumption was that this is an irrational, so that means, so our assumption was that this is irrational, so that means now hence 5 minus 2 root 3 is an irrational number. Okay, so this solves part A and moving on to part B. I'm going to erase this. So moving on to part B. For part B, Okay, moving on to part B of the same question. This is part B and we have to show that 5 into 11 plus 17 plus 17 plus 3 into 11 is a composite number and composite number is a number that has more than two factors apart from one and the number itself. Okay, so if I try to take common in these two terms so this is the first term this is the second term and the common is 11 so and this is actually plus i cannot but this is into so 11 is common and i have 5 into 17 plus 3 which gives me 11 into 88 so 11 into 88 and I can write it as 11 into 11 into 2 cube because if we factorize 88 so this is 244, 222 and 211 so this is 11 into 2 cube. So that means this number can be expressed as a product of two factors other than so these are the other two factors 11 and 2. So that means this number can be, this number has this or the given number has two more factors apart from one the number itself and if if a number has other factors apart from one in the number itself then it is a composite number so it is a composite number with this we are done with section b let's move on to section c thank you for watching Okay, for section C, and this section consists of six questions of three marks each. 
and uh, we are going to solve both the parts so that is for start with part a and it's given that we have to find the ratio in which the point 8 comma 5 divide the line set between the points 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 so let this be point b 8 comma 5 y it divides line segment joining the points and these points be a 1 comma 2 and b 2 comma 3 so we have this line that has the points a so this is let's say point a and this is point b and this is point b so coordinates of a are 1 comma 2 b are 2 comma 3 and b are 8 comma 5 by 1 and let p divides it in the ratio case to 1 so this is p this is a and this is b so let P divides AB in the ratio case to 1. So we are going to use the section formula and let's put in the respective values. So using section formula which gives us the coordinates of the point that divides the line segment in the ratio case to 1. So this is equal to M1X2 plus M2X1 upon m1 plus m2 and m1 y2 plus m2 y1 upon m1 plus m2 now this is m1 which is k m2 is 1 and these are x1 y1 and these are x2 y2 so let's put in the value so x comma y is given to us which is 8 by 5 comma y and m1 is k x2 is 2 m2 is 1 x1 is 1 m1 plus m2 is k plus 1 now m1 is k y2 is 3 m2 is 1 y1 is 2 upon k plus 1 and if we simplify this so finally we have 8 comma 5 upon 8 upon 5 comma y is equal to 2k plus 1 upon k plus 1 this is 3k plus 2 upon k plus 1 and let's equate these the corresponding coordinates so 8 comma 5 is equal to 2k plus 1 upon k plus 1 if we cross multiply this this is 8k plus 8 is equal to 10k plus 5 so this is minus 2k is equal to minus 3 and the required ratio is 3 is to 2 so it's asked in the question we have to find the ratio so the required ratio is 2 is 3 is to 2 so required ratio is 3 is to 2 now we have to find the value of y so we can write here required ratio is through three is to two now if we have to find the value of y let's equate the y coordinates so y is equal to three k plus two upon k plus one and y is equal to three into k is three by two plus two upon three by two plus one so y is equal to 9 by 2 plus 2 upon 3 by 2 plus 1 is 5 by 2 and this is equal to 9 plus 4 is 13 so this gets cancelled and y is equal to 13 by 5 so the value of y is 13 by 5 so we have solved part a and now let's move on to part b so i'm going to raise this so okay, moving on to part B, we have to show that the for the given coordinates of a quadrilateral or a rectangle. So A, B, C, D is a rectangle that's given to us. So this is part B and let's draw our rectangle. So let's say A, B, C, D, this is 
the rectangle with the given coordinates and P, Q, R, S are the midpoints of side A, B, B, C, C, D and D, A. We have to show the diagonals of the quadrilateral. So let's join the midpoints. So I'm going to join the midpoints and I'm going to label them. So this is A, coordinate A, B, C and D taken in order. So coordinates of A are minus one comma minus one. Coordinates of B are minus one comma six. And coordinates of C are three comma six. Coordinates of D are three comma minus one. And P is the midpoint of A, B, Q is the midpoint of B, C, R is the midpoint of C, D and S is the midpoint of D. We have to show that the diagonals of the coordinate will PQR is bisect each other. So these are the diagonals PQ RS. Okay. Now let's find out the coordinates. First of all, let's find out the coordinates of PQR and S because these are the midpoints. So we are going to use the midpoint formula that is x1 upon x2. So I'm going to find the coordinates of p so coordinates of p are x1 plus x2 so minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 2 by 2 and minus 1 plus 6 is 5 by 2 so the coordinates are minus 1 comma 5 comma 2 and i'm going to use this for i i'm using this formula x1 upon x2 y2 plus y1 upon y1 y2 by 2 for the midpoint. Similarly, then let's find out the coordinates of Q. So coordinates of Q will be minus 1 plus 3 by 2. So coordinates of Q is minus 1 plus 3 is 2. So this is 2 by 2 and 6 plus 6 is 12. So 12 by 2, which gives us 1 comma 6. So the coordinates of Q are 1 comma 6. And let's find out the coordinates of point R. So coordinates of R. So, and we are using this formula for to find out the coordinates of these midpoints P, Q, R, and S. So for R is 3 plus 3 is 6, but divided by 2 is 3. And 6 minus 1 is 5. So this is 3 comma 5 by 2. So 3 comma 5 by 2 and coordinates of point S. So coordinates of point S is minus 1 plus 3 is 2 comma 2. And minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 divided by 2 which gives us 1 comma minus 1. So we have the coordinates of the midpoint and now we are going to find the coordinates of the midpoint of R because if the diagonals bisect each other so the midpoint of R for PR should coincide with the midpoint of QS. So let's find out the coordinates of PR and QS and if the coordinates are same that means that these diagonals bisect each other at O. So coordinates of midpoint of both the diagonals and coordinates of midpoint of first diagonal is PR and the second diagonal is PR and QS. And we know how to find the coordinates of midpoints. So P R. So P and R. So minus 1 plus 3 is 2 divided by 2. 5 by 2 plus 5 by 2 is 10 by 2, which is 5. So the coordinates are 1, comma 5. 1, comma, sorry, 5 by 2. 5 by 2 plus 5 by 2 is 10 by 2 okay so 
So the coordinates are one comma coordinates of midpoint of diagonal PR. So this is five by two plus five by two divided by two. These are so minus one plus three is two. So two divided by two is one, and five by two plus five by two is five divided by two. So one comma five by two, and the coordinates of midpoint of Q is coordinates of Q is this, and S is this. So one plus one is two divided by two is one. 6 minus 1 is 5. Okay, finally, the coordinates of midpoint of PR is equal to coordinates of midpoint of QS. So, therefore, that means the diagonals bisect each other because their midpoint is same. So, we can write here that since midpoint of PR is equal to, or these are the coordinates, coordinates of midpoint of PR is equal to coordinates of midpoint of QS. So that means diagonals PR and QS bisect each other. And if they bisect each other, that means that PQRS is a parallelogram. Okay, so we are done with question number 26. Let's move on to question number 27. Thank you for watching. Okay, for question number 27, it's given that in a teacher's workshop, the number of teachers teaching French and Hindi, French, Hindi and English are 48, 40 and 144 respectively. We have to find the minimum number of rooms required. If, it, if in each room the same number of teachers are seated and all of them are, the, are of the same subject. So, this is question number 27 and French, Hindi and English teachers are there. So French teachers are 48 and Hindi teachers are 80 and 144. We have to find the minimum number of rooms. So minimum number of rooms are required so that means in each room, there should be maximum number of teachers. So maximum number of teachers means that we have to find the H, find the HCF of 48, 80, and 144. So if we factorize 48, so 48, if we factorize this, this is 24, 212, 26, 23. So this is 2 raised power 4 into 3. And if we factorize 80, so 80 is also 2 raised power 4 into 5. 2 raised power 4 is 16 and 16 to 5. 16 to 5 is 80 and next is 144. So if we factorize 144, this is 272, 236 and 218, 29, which is 3 square. So 2 raised power 4 into 3 square. And HCF here is 2 raised power 4 is common. And it's 2 raised power 4, which is equal to 16. Now we have to find the minimum number of rooms. The minimum number of rooms. So that means in each room, there can be maximum of 16 teachers. So 48 French teachers. If we divide it with 16, it's 3. So that means there will be 3 rooms required for the French teachers. And 80 divided by 16 is 5. So 5 rooms for Hindi teachers. And 144 divided by 16 is uh, 9. So that means the 9 rooms are for English teachers. So the total number of rooms or total number of rooms required are 3 plus 5 plus 9 and we can write total number of rooms that are required for these teachers 3 are for French, 5 for Hindi and 9 for English so total of 
17 rooms are required. Let's move on to question number 28. Thank you for watching. Okay, for question number 28, we have to prove this trigonometric identity which has LHS. So this is question number 28 and it's given that LHS is equal to tan theta upon 1 minus cot theta plus this is cot theta upon 1 minus tan theta. Okay, now let's convert these or write these, express these in the form of sine and cos. So tan is sine theta by cos theta, then it's division sine. So 1 minus cot is cos theta by sine theta, and then it's the plus sine. So plus cot theta is cos by sine theta, and it's division sine. 1 minus tan is sine theta by cos theta. Okay, we are going to take LCM in the denominators, move these denominators. So this is, numerator is going to be same and it's sine theta. So this is sine theta minus cos theta and plus it's cos theta on sine theta and let's take calcium which is cos so cos theta minus sine theta and if we simplify this so this is going to be sine theta by cos theta into sine theta upon sine theta minus cos theta then plus this is cos theta upon sine theta into cos theta upon cos theta minus sine theta. Now sine theta into sine theta is sine square theta and this is cos theta into sine theta minus cos theta and after that is plus so cos into cos is cos square theta and let's take negative out of this. So if I take negative out of this, this is negative and now sine theta, if I take negative out of this, this becomes sine theta minus cos theta. Okay, I'm going to take LCM once again, and this time the LCM is the product. So for these two, the LCM is cos theta, sine theta, and because these are two times, so I'm going to write it as one time. So sine theta minus cos theta. Okay, now if we simplify this, this is sine cube theta. Let's divide this with this. So cos theta into sine theta minus cos theta gets, gets cancelled. And this gets multiplied with sine theta, which is left. Similarly here, it's cos cube theta. Now this is the formula A cube minus B cube. And we know that A cube minus B cube is A minus B into A square plus AB plus B square. So this is now sine theta minus cos theta sine square theta plus a into b plus cos square theta upon cos theta into sine theta into sine theta minus cos theta okay sine theta minus sine theta minus cos theta gets cancelled sine square theta plus cos square theta is one plus sine theta into cos theta upon cos theta into sine theta and if we try to separate these fractions with the denominator so it's one upon cos theta into sine theta plus sine theta into cos theta upon cos theta into sine theta this is one and one by cos is secant theta and one by sine is cosecant theta plus this is 1. So this is equal to RHS. So hence we have proved that this identity is LHS is equal to secant theta plus cosecant theta plus 1. Which is equal to RHS. Let's move on to question number 29. Thank you for watching.
Okay, for question number 29, it's given that three years ago, Rashmi was thrice as old as Nazma. And this is question number 29. So we have to find the ages, ages of Rashmi and Nazma. So this is question number 29. Let present. Ages of Rashmi and Nazma be X and Y years respectively. Now, three years ago, three years ago, Rashmi's age will be X minus three and Nazma's age will be X, Y minus three. So Rashmi was three times. So this is three times the age of Nazma. So this gives us the first linear equation, x minus three is equal to three y minus nine, which is x minus three y plus six is equal to zero. Let this be first set of equation. Now, 10 years later, so 10 years later, the ages will be x plus 10 and y plus 10. Now, Rashmi will be twice as old as Nazma. So, x plus 10 is equal to 2y plus 20. And this gives a second set of equation as x minus 2y minus 10 is equal to 0. So, these are the first and the second set of equations. And now, we are going to solve them. First one is x minus 3y plus 6 is equal to 0. And second one is x minus 2y minus 10 is equal to 0. And we are going to solve them. So I'm going to subtract these two equations. x minus 3y plus 6 is equal to 0. And x minus 2y minus 10 is equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract these by changing the signs. So this gets cancelled. Minus 3y plus 2y is minus y. 6 plus 10 is... 16 so minus y is equal to minus 16 and y is equal to 16 so that means nazma's age is 16 and let's find out from 1 so from 1 we can get Rush, uh, rashmi's age and this is x minus 3 into y y is 16 plus 6 is equal to 0 so this is minus 48 plus 6 is equal to 0 which will give us minus 42 and x is equal to 42. So Rashmi's age which is the present age is 42 years and Nazma's age is 16 years. So 42 and 16 are the respective ages and this also question number 29 thank you for watching okay for next question that is question number 30 we are going to solve both the parts and for part a it's given that in the given figure a b is a diameter so this is the figure where a b is the diameter of the circle with center o so we are going to solve part a and let's say these are the angles one and i'm going to join this so let's say this is a o b p q and i'm going to name this as let's say r so this is r and these are angles one two three and four so we have to show that angle p o q we have to show that angle p o q is equal to 90 degree this is we have to show so what we have done is we have joined o to r and now we are going to give the proof for this okay now let's consider these triangles a o q so in triangle a o q and triangle q o r so OA is equal to OR, this being the radii of same circle. 
Now, OQ is equal to OQ. This is and AQ is equal to QR because these are tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal. So tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal, which is the second theorem of the circle chapter. So tangents drawn from external point to a circle are equal. Now, so that means triangle AOQ is congruent to triangle QOR by SSS congruence two, which means angle two is equal to angle one is equal to angle two CPCT. Similarly, we can prove that angle three is equal to angle four for the triangles POR and BOP, they will be congruent. Now, let this be our first set of equations. Now, angle one plus two plus three plus four gives us 180 degree because these are the angles on line AOB and AOB is a straight line. So I can write here the reason is AOB is a straight line. Now because we have to find prove POQ so I'm going just going to keep two and three and replace one and four. So one is replaced with two, two is there, three is there and instead of four I can write angle P is equal to 180 degree. So this is two times angle two plus two times angle three is equal to 180 degree. Two is common angle two plus angle three is equal to 180 degree and two plus three if we add two and three that gives us angle POQ so this is 90 so that means angle POQ is equal to 90 degree and this also our first part and let's move on to the second part where a circle with center O and radius A is inscribed in a quadrilateral so I'm going to take this off Here we are part B where a circle with center O and radius 8 centimeters is inscribed in a quadrilateral. So this is part B and this is the quadrilateral ABCD. If AD is perpendicular to AD is perpendicular to DC, BC is equal to 30. So BC that means this is 30 centimeter BC and BS. BS is 24 centimeter. Now BS and BR are equal, so BS is equal to BR is equal to 24 centimeter. Reason being, these are the tangents drawn from an external point B. So tangents drawn, and we know that tangents drawn from external point to a circle are equal. Okay, so that means this is BR is 24. So if BR is 24, we can find out CR. So CR is equal to BC minus BR. And BC is 30, BR is 24, which is equal to 6 centimeters. So this is 6 centimeter. So that means QC is also 6 centimeter because so this is. Uh, C or CR is equal to QC is equal to 6 centimeter. The reason being the tangents drawn from an external point to circle are equal. So we can give the same reason for this. And now uh, let's join these points OP and OQ. And it's given that uh, it has radius 8 centimeters. So this is these are the radii 8 centimeter and 8 centimeter. We have to find the value of DC. So DC is the value that we have to find out. Now, angle P is equal to angle D is given. Angle D is 90 degree, angle P and angle Q. So angle D is, this is, I'm talking about quadrilateral P, O, Q, D. 
angle D is equal to 90 degree and this is given and angle P is equal to angle Q these are also 90 degree because we know that radius these are the radii and the radius is perpendicular to the tangent it's perpendicular to tangent at the point of contact so if d is 90 p is 90 q is also 90 this is 90 this is 90 so that means this angle is also 90 so that means quadrilateral p o q d is a square because these two sides are equal so this is also a this is also a so if it's if it is a square it's all sides are equal so that means dq is equal to dq is equal to eight centimeter and if it's dq is equal to eight centimeter now we can easily find out dc which is dq plus qc and dq is a plus six is equal to 14 centimeter dc is 14 centimeter and let's move on to question number 31 thank you for watching looking for question number 31 it's given that the difference between the outer and inner radii of a hollow right circular cylinder of length 14 centimeter is one centimeter so this is question number 31 and let the outer radius and let it be r1 let the outer radius be r1 and the inner radius be r2 so it's given that the distance difference between them is one centimeter so this let me be first set of equation let's try to understand this question so it's given that this is let's say the cylinder with the inner and the outer radii so this is the outer radii r1 this is the inner radii r2 and difference between them this is one centimeter now this is a cylinder so let's draw this as a hollow cylinder and if this is a hollow cylinder this is the base with outer and the inner radii now the length of this cylinder is 14 centimeter so this is 14 centimeter and it's given that the volume of the metal used in making the cylinder so volume of the metal used in making the cylinder is here so this is the volume of the metal that is and how do we find the volume of the metal used in making the cylinder that is we will subtract the volume of these two cylinders with the outer and the inner radii so i can write here that volume of metal used for making cylinder that is equal to volume of the outer cylinder which is pi r1 square h and volume of the inner, inner cylinder which is pi r2 square h so volume of metal used for making cylinder is given to us as which is 176 centimeter cube so this is 176 and this is pi into h r1 square minus r2 square so this is 176 square your pi is 22 by 7 i is 14 this is a square minus b square so a plus b into a minus b and r1 minus r2 is given to us which is 1 so i can write that r1 plus r2 is equal to 1 this is 1 and 176 into 7 by 22 into 1 by 14 this is 1 so we can neglect that so 11 2 are is 22 11 1 are 11 6 this is 2 8 and 2 7 that is 14 4 this gets cancelled so this is 4 now we have two set of equations first is r1 minus r2 is equal to 1 and second is r1 plus r2 is equal to 4 and if we subtract these equations so this is sorry add these equations this is 2 r1 is equal to 5 which gives us r1 is equal to 
five centimeters. So the outer radius is two point five. And if we write these equations and once again in the vertical form, and if we subtract them, so this time it's this is minus. Just change the signs to subtract them. So this time this gets cancelled. Minus r two minus r two is minus two r two. One minus four is minus three. So r two is equal to three by two is one point five. So r two is one point five and r one is two point five centimeter. These are the inner and the outer radii of for question number thirty one. Thank you for watching. Okay, for next question, it's given that a block of mass 2 kg is dropped from a height 40 centimeters. So let's say this is a block of mass 2 kg and it's been dropped from a height of 40 centimeter on a spring whose spring constant is 1960 newton per meter. So let's say this is the spring in which this is dropped. And so when this box is dropped onto the spring, it compresses, let's say, to a distance x. So it compresses to a distance x. So this was a height. And now uh, this height was 40 centimeter. So this was the height 40 centimeters. So up to this. It is 40 so then when this ball is dropped let's say this spring compresses and reach here so it compresses by x meter so 40 centimeter is 0.4 meter and it compresses by x meter so this is x so now the total height is 0.4 plus x Now, the decrease in potential energy will be given to the elastic potential energy of the spring. So, this is the spring. So, here we can say that the decrease or decrease in potential energy or the potential energy at the height 0.4 plus x meter is given to the elastic potential energy of the spring. So, I can write here decrease in gravitational potential energy of law. So, this is decrease in gravitational potential energy of block becomes the increase so this is a decrease in gravitational potential energy of block it becomes or is equal to the increase in elastic potential energy of spring so this is equal to increase in Elastic potential energy of spring. So decrease in gravitational potential energy is potential energy is given by m into g and height is now h plus x. An increase in kinetic energy just elastic potential energy of spring is half kx square. Let's put in the values. Mass is two. So this is two. G is 9.8 is 0.4 meter x is not known half into k is 1960 newton per meter so this is 1960 into x square okay so if you try to solve this this is 2 into 9.8 is 19.6 into 0.4 plus x is equal to half into 1960 into x square 19.6 is 196 by 10 and this is 10 so this is now 0.4 plus x is equal to this is 5 and this is 50 x square so this is a quadratic equation with 50 x square minus x minus 0.4 is equal to 0 and we are going to solve this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula x is equal to minus b plus minus b square minus 4ac by 2a 
so minus of minus one we are going to put in the values for this equation a is 50 b is minus one and c is 0.4 meter so plus minus b square is minus one square minus four into a is 50 and c is minus 0.4 upon 2 into a 2 into a which is 50. so finally x is equal to 1 plus minus this is 1 and minus of minus is plus so this is 8 by 100 and x is equal to i'm going to take 1 this is 1 plus 8 is 9 okay sorry this should be actually this is 8 4 into 50 4 in 5 4 that is 20 22 4 is 80 and with so this is 80 and 1 plus 80 is 81 divided by 100 so our values are this is 1 plus minus this is 9 upon 100 and i'm going to take the positive value so 1 plus 9 by 100 and x is equal to 1 minus 9 by 100 so this is we are going to reject this so x is equal to 10 by 100 which is equal to 0.1 meter so the spring is going to be compressed by 0.1 meter thank you for watching Okay, for our next question, it's given that a block of mass M, which is initially at rest, is dropped from a height H onto a spring whose force constant is K. We have to find the maximum distance X through which, so this is, let's say, dropped from a height H. And when it's dropped on, so let this be height H. And initially the spring is here and when it's dropped and when the block is dropped on it let's say this is the distance x by which this is the distance x by which the spring is compressed so the total height by which the block falls is h plus x so this is the potential energy here which gets converted into the elastic branch energy of the spring so decrease in potential energy of the block is the gain of the elastic elastic branch energy of the spring we are going to use this concept so i'm going to write it down it's the decrease in because the potential energy is maximum at height from where it is dropped so decrease in potential energy of block is equal to increase in in elastic potential energy of spring now decrease in potential energy of the block is m into g into height to which it is dropped is h plus x increase in kinetic energy is half into kx square where k is the spring constant and x is the maximum distance by which the spring is compressed so i'm going to open this this is mgh plus mgx is equal to half kx square so finally i can write it as kx square is equal to 2 mgh plus 2 mgx so this is a quadratic equation and it's minus 2 mgx minus 2 mgh is equal to 0 i'm going to write the respective coefficient of x square and x so a is k b is minus 2 mg and c is minus 2 mgh now we are going to use a quadratic formula to find the value of x so x is minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a and let's put in the value so x is equal to minus b is minus of minus 2 mg plus minus root of this is b square which is minus 2 mg the whole square plus minus <coughs> sorry 
this is minus 4 into a is k into c is minus 2 mgh upon 2 into a which is 2k so i'm going to take this half out so half is out and this is now 2mg so this is 2mg plus minus this is 4 m square mg square plus 4 over is 8 mghk upon uk so x is equal to half and this is now i'm going to separate these terms with the denominator so 2 mg upon k this is because 2 is out so 2 mg upon k plus minus and this is i can write it as 2 mg the whole square plus 8 mg hk upon this is k so 2 is out so i am left with k now for k i can write it there i can take it under the uh, root so plus minus uh, for k i can write it as under root k square so under root this is under root a upon b now under root a upon under root b is equal to under root a upon b so this is 2 mg the whole square upon k square plus 8 mg h k upon k square this whole is now under the root so x is equal to half and this is 2 mg by k plus minus okay so i can write this as this is 2 mg upon k the whole square plus this gets cancelled and it is 8 mg h by k so this is the maximum distance by which the spring is compressed when a block of mass m falls on a spring of spring constant k so half into 2 mg by k plus minus under root 2 mg by k the whole square plus 8 mg h by k thank you for watching for section d uh, this section consists of questions of five marks each and we are about to solve question number 32 which is related to the areas of circles that is areas related to circles and it's given in the question this is of five marks so this is question number 32 now it's given that an arc of a circle of radius 21 centimeter subtends an angle of 60 degree at the center we have to find the length of the arc so let this be a circle of radius 41 centimeter and this is the center o let's get this sector o a b and let's say this is c so this is sector O A C B. It's given that the radius is 21 centimeter and this subtends an angle of 60 degree at the center. So first of all, let's find out the length of the arc. So length of the arc, that is arc A C B. This is what we are supposed to find out arc A C B. So the arc length is given by the formula theta by 360 into 2 pi r so theta is 60 so this is 60 upon 360 into 2 into 22 by 7 into r is 21 so this is now 6 3 and 3 and 3 it's cancelled so this is 22 centimeters so 22 centimeter is the length of the arc and moving on to <coughs> the second part we have to find area of the minor segment so minor segment let's connect or join this chord a b 
and now we have this segment AB. So this is the segment AB. We have to find the area of the minor segment made by the corresponding chord. So we have to find the area of the segment ACB. So part is area of segment that is the minor segment ACB and we are going to find it by subtracting the area from sector sector OACB minus area of triangle OAB. So area of the sector is given by the formula it's theta by 360 and area of the circle mm -hmm. minus area of the triangle now because this central angle is 60 degree mm -hmm. and these oa and ob are equal so that means these two angles are also equal and they are also 60 degrees so that means uh, this aob is an equilateral triangle and we know that the area of the equilateral triangle is given by root 3 by 4 into side square so theta is 60, 60 by 360 into 22 by 7 into the radius is 21 square oh. minus so root 3 by 4 side square is once again 21 into 21. Okay, yeah. so let's try to simplify this. This is 6 and 3, 7, 3, 7, and finally we have one this is one fifty four okay I will just leave it because the value of root three is not given in the question so okay. This is 60 upon 3, 60, 22 by 7 in 21 into 21. So this is 3. And with this, it gets cancelled for 120. And this is 2. Now this is 11. And 11 into 21 is 231. So 231 minus 21 into 21 is 441. So 441 by into root 3 by 4 centimeter square is the area of the minor segment and i will just leave it with the, this value 231 minus 441 by root 3 because the value of root 3 is not given in the question so i will just leave it here so we are done with question number 32 thank you for watching sorry question number 31 thank you for watching for question number 33 part a so this is question number 33 part a uh, it's given that the sum of first and eighth terms of an ab is 32 so sum of first and eighth term of an ab is 32 and their product is 60 we have to find the first term and common difference of the ab and then we have to find the sum of first 20 terms so the first term is a and h term is a8 so let's get the equation from there a8 is equal to 32. <coughs> now if we use the nth term formula a8 is a plus 7b is equal to 32 so this is 2a plus 7d is equal to 32 and let's get the value of a here so a is 32 minus 7d by 2 so let this be first equation and further is given that their product is 60 so their product means a into a8 is equal to 60 let's replace substitute the value of a that is 32 minus 7d by 2 into a8 which is a plus 7d is equal to 60 and now let's replace the value of a 
So 32 minus 7D by 2 A is 32 minus 7D by 2 plus 7D is equal to 60. So this is 32 minus 7D by 2. And if you take the LCM, this is 32 minus 7D plus 14D is equal to 60. <clears throat> so finally, we have 32 minus 7D into 32 plus 7D and 2 into 2 is 4. So this is equal to 60. Now this is of the form A minus B into A plus B. So A minus B into A plus A. B is 32 minus this is a square minus b square and 4 is taken to RHS. This is 2. 14 R square of 32 is 1, 2 is 1, 0, 2, 4. 49 d square is equal to 2, 4, 0. <coughs> so this is now minus 49 d square is equal to 240 minus 1, 0, 2, 4. <coughs> now, this is minus 49d square is equal to, so 240 minus 1024, this is minus 784, so this is minus 784 minus minus, we can strike them, and d square is equal to 784 divided by 49. This gets cancelled, which should be equal to 16. And finally, d is equal to plus minus 16. So we have two values for d. So d is equal to plus minus 4. Okay, so let's get the value of a. So when d is equal to 4 and d is equal to minus 4, so we have two values of d. So when d is equal to 4, a is equal to 32 minus 7. We are using this 7 into 4 by 2. So a is equal to 32 minus 28 by 2, which is equal to this is 4 by 2 is equal to 2. And in both cases, we have to find the sum of 20 terms. So the sum of first 20 terms is n by 2. n is 20. So this is 20 by 2. 2 into a. We are using the formula 2 into a is 2 plus n minus 1. n is 20 minus 1 is 19 into d is 4. So this is now 10. So sum of 20 terms is equal to 10. This is 4 plus and 76. So this is 10 into 80, which gives us sum of 20 terms is. 800 and we have this value when d is equal to 4 and a is equal to 2. Look at that when d is equal to minus 4 let's try to get a so this is 7 into minus 4 divided by 2 so a is equal to 32 plus 28 divided by 2 <coughs> and this is 60 by 2 is 30 so a is equal to 30. Now we have to find the value of sum of 20 terms, which is n by 2 into 2 into a. So 2 into 30 plus n minus 1, which is 19, and d is negative 4. So this is 10, 60 minus 9, 4 is 36, 76. So this is 10 into 76 minus 60, that is minus 16. Okay, so finally, with it's equal to minus 162. So, sum of 20 terms in this case is minus 160. Let's move on to part B. <laughs> Okay, for part B, it's given that in an AP of 40 terms, the sum of first nine terms is 153. So, this is part B and number of terms is 40. Sum of first nine terms is 153 and sum of nine terms is written as S9 
is equal to 153. We are going to use the formula sum of n terms which is n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d is equal to 153. So n here is 9, so this is 9 by 2. 2a plus n minus 1, 9 minus 1 is 8d is equal to 153, which gives us 2a plus 8d is equal to 153 into 2 by 9. So 9 on that is 9 and 7 are 63. So 2a plus 8d is equal to 34. Let this be equation 1. Now, it's further is given that the sum of last six terms. So last six terms are the 35th term, 36th, 37th, 38th, 39th, 39th and 40th term and some of these last six terms is 687 so these are the last six terms 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and a34 if we use the nth term formula a35 is a plus 34 d this is a plus 35 d 36 and a37 is a plus 36d a38 is a plus 37d a39 is a plus 38d and this is a plus 39d is equal to 687 so <coughs> a is six times so this is 6a and 34 plus 35 plus 36 37 38 and 39 is equal to 9 plus 8 is 17 and 7 is 24 and 6 is 30 35 and 4 is 39 and 3 is 6 this is 219 219 d is equal to 67 so 6a plus 219 d is equal to 687 we can take three common so if we take three common so this is 3a plus 73d is equal to 687 and this is 2 3 to the 6 3 to the 6 and 9 this is 229 so this is our second equation 2a plus 73d is equal to 229 this is the second equation now we are going to solve the first and the second equation so let's subtract them so 2a plus 8d is equal to 34 first equation and the second is 2a plus 73d so 2a plus 73d is equal to 2 to 9 so this is 2 to 9 and i'm going to subtract these equations by changing the signs of the terms of the second equation this gets cancelled 13 minus 8 is minus 65d and this is minus so 9 minus 4 is 5 okay. 12 minus 3 is 9. So this is minus 65d. Oh, sorry. Uh, so 2 to 9 minus 2 9 minus 4 is 5. 12 minus 3 is 9 minus 195. This so d is equal to 195 divided by 65. So 65 threes are is 5 3 is 15 6 18 and 19 so d is equal to 3 so the value of d is 3 and from 1 we can get the value of a so one equation gives us 2a so this first equation can be written as if we take two common this is a plus 8 sorry 4 a plus 4 d is equal to 34 so this is 17 and a plus 4 into d is 3 is equal to 17 which gives us a is equal to 17 minus 12 which is equal to 5 so the value of a is 5 and we are not done yet so further is we have to find the first term and the common difference which is done now we have to find the sum of all the terms sum of all the terms means 40 terms 
So that means we have to find the sum of 40 terms. Let's use the formula n by 2 into 2 into a. a is the value of a is 5. So this is 5 plus n minus 1, which is 39, and d is 3. The value of d is 3. <coughs> so this is 20 and 5 into 2 is 10. 9 3 is not 27, 3 is the 9, 10. So this is 20 into <coughs> 39 into 3. Okay. So this is uh, 10 is 127 and 127 into 2 is 7, 2 is 14, 2 is 4, 5, 2, so 2540 is the sum of all the terms of this AP. Thank you for watching. Okay, for question number 34, part A, it's, we have to prove that if a line is drawn parallel to one point of a triangle to intersect the other two sides in distinct points. We have to prove that other two sides are divided in the same ratio, which is the BPT theorem. So let's try to prove that and let's get our triangle first. So let's say this is triangle ABC. And in this uh, our triangle is given that line is drawn parallel to one side of the triangle so that this be the line drawn parallel to one side of the triangle to detect the other two sides in distinct points. Okay, let's label them. So let's say this is triangle A, B, and C, and this is line D. Okay, so what is given to us is that D E is parallel to bc and we have to prove that ad by db is equal to a by ec and for this we are going to do some construction we are going to draw perpendicular from d to ac and from e to ab and we are going to join DC and we are going to join B. So <coughs> this is DM and this is EN. So the construction I have done here is draw DM perpendicular to AC and EN perpendicular to now let's start with the proof. So in the proof, we are going to divide the area of triangle ADE by area of triangle BDE. Now area of triangle AD is half into base is AD. So this is the base AD. So this is AD and height is to the base AD, the corresponding height is EN. So this is EN. And for triangle BDE, it's the base is BD and this is an obtuse angle triangle. So this is how the BD is, which is obtuse angle triangle. So it's the perpendicular is if drawn from the this vertex looks like this so this is the perpendicular which is en so this is en this is bd and so the perpendicular is outside the triangle so this half and half and en and en gets cancelled and finally we have ad by bd let's say this is the first set of equation and once again we are going to take the next triangle this is tri same triangle ADE, but the, in this case, on area of triangle DEC. Now ADE in 
In this case, let's say the base is A and corresponding to base A, the uh, altitude is DM. So now this is half into triangle DC and also an obtuse angle triangle for which the <coughs> uh, perpendicular is outside the triangle which is DM and its base is EC and the perpendicular is DM so this gets cancelled half and half and finally we have AE by EC okay now this <coughs> The triangle A, A, BDE and triangle DEC, these are between the same values DE and BC and on the same base DE and we know that triangles on the same base and between the same values are equal in area. So here area of triangle BDE is equal to area of triangle DEC. The reason being these are the triangles on same base D and between the same parallels D and B C and triangles on the same base and between the same parallels are equal in area. And so that means I can replace DEC with BDE and then both these two sides of these two equations becomes equal. That is the LHS becomes equal and RHS becomes equal. So instead of replacing this, I can simply write from 1, 2 and 3. This is AD by DB. This is AD by DE. DB is equal to AE by EC. Hence, we have proved, proved the PPT theorem. Let's move on to part B. For question number 34, part B, for the given figure, we have to prove that 1 upon x plus 1 upon z is equal to 1 upon y. So let me draw this figure. So once again, so the figure looks like this. Okay, now this is P, A, B, Q, C, R. This is Z, this is Y, this is X. And all these P, A, Q, B, and R, C are perpendicular to A, C. So what is given to us is that P, A, Q, B, and R, C, all these are perpendicular to A, C. And we have to show that it's 1 upon X plus 1 upon z is equal to 1 upon y. Okay, okay let's start with the proof and for, the, for this we are going to prove these two triangles similar in pairs. So first one is in triangle PAC and triangle QBC. So in this uh, angle A is equal to angle B both being 90 degree and angle C is equal to angle C because these angles are overlapping and these are the common angles. So I can write that PAC is similar to triangle QBC and the root being used there is AA similarity now if these two triangles are similar that means their corresponding sides are in proportion so PA by QB is equal to AC by BC and PA is X QB is Y and AC let's write this at AC and BC so this is equation 1 
I'm going to write it as the reciprocal. So y upon x by reciprocal this. So this also has to be a reciprocal. So bc by ac and let this be first set of equation. Now in this figure, I'm going to take another pair of triangles, which is R, C, A and triangle Q, B, A. Now angle Q, B, this is angle B is equal to angle C. Both angles are 90 degree and angle A is equal to angle A. This is Okay, this is <clears throat> common, so that means triangle RCA is similar to triangle QBA, and this is also by AA similarity to now RC by QB. RC by QB is equal to CA by BA. Now RC is Z, QB is Y, and the value of CA and BA is not known. I'm going to cross multiply as if we put these two sides. So B A by C A, let this be second set of equation. So we have the first and the second set of equations, and I'm going to add these two results. So one plus two is y upon x plus y upon z is equal to B A upon C A plus B C upon C A or A C. And y is common, so 1 upon x plus 1 upon z. C a is common, so this is b a plus b c. And b a plus b c, so b a plus b c is a c. So y into 1 plus x plus 1 plus z is equal to c a by c a. This is 1. And finally, I can write it as 1 upon x plus 1 upon z is equal to 1 by y, which is the required result. Thank you for watching. Okay, for question number 35. So this is question number 35. It's given that it pours 6 meter high is fixed on the top of a tower. This is a tower. And a pool six meter high. Pratham? So this is the pool six meter high that it fixed on the top of the tower. The angle of elevation of the top of the pool observed from a point P. So this is point P. From where the angle of elevation to the top of the tower is. So angle of elevation of the top of the pole, so this is, this is the tower. And this is pole. And the angle of elevation on the top of the pole from a point P on the ground. So this is point B, P. And here the angle of elevation to the top of the pole is 60 degree. So this is 60 degree. And the angle of depression of the point P from the top of the tower is 45 degree. So tower from the top of the tower, this is the top of the tower. And from here, the angle of depression to the point P. So this is the angle of depression, which is 45 degree. Now these two are parallels, this and this one. So let's say AB be the height of the pole, BC be the height of the tower. And this is DE, BE. Now B is parallel to BC, that means it's 45. These two angles are 45 degree, and these are the alternate angles. And now we have to find the height of the tower, that is, we have to find BC and the distance of point P from the foot of the tower, that is BC. Okay, so in this question, let's first define this, that AB is equal to 6 meter, this B, 
the height of O and BC be the height of tower. Okay, now in this right angled triangle BPC, if we use tan 45, which is P by B, so this is equal to PC by BC, tan 45 is 1, so this is PC by BC, and if we cross multiply this, so that means PC is equal to BC. Let this be first set of equation. Okay, now we are going to consider another right angle triangle, which is ACP. So in a right angle triangle, ACP, we are going to use once again the tan ratio. The tan 60 is AC by BC, and AC can be broken into AB plus BC or split up into AB plus BC. AB is 6, BC and pc is equal to bc so instead of pc i can write bc so now tan 60 is root 3 so the root 3 is equal to 6 plus pc upon bc and if we cross multiply this this is bc root 3 is equal to 6 plus bc let's take bc to the left hand side so bc into root b minus bc is equal to 6 and bc into root 3 minus 1 is equal to 6 so bc is equal to 6 upon root 3 minus 1 and if we rationalize this this is root 3 plus 1 upon root 3 plus 1 the conjugate 6 into root 3 plus 1 this is always a squared minus b squared, so a squared minus b squared. And now this is 6 into the root 3 plus 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2, so this is 3. 3 into root 3 is 1.73 plus 1. This is equal to 3 into 2.73, which is equal to 9. 7 3 is 21, 68, and 8.19 meter. So BC is 8.19 meter and PC is also equal to BC. So BC is also 8.19 meter. So 8.19 meter is the height of the tower and the distance of the point B from the foot of the tower is also 8.19 meter. Thank you for watching. And for section E, <clears throat> now this section consists of three case study-based questions of four marks each. And let's try to solve the first one that is the 36. It's given that a rectangular flow area can be completely tiled with 200 square tiles. And if the side length of each tile is increased by one unit, it would take now 128 tiles. Assuming the original length of each side of the tile be x units, we have to make the quadratic equation. Okay, suppose let's say this is the square tile and length of this square tile Very is x unit now this area of tile is equal to side into side which gives us x square square units okay so this is x square square units and <coughs> Initially, 200 tile square tiles can completely uh, fill or tile the rectangular area. So that means area of rectangular flow should equal to 200 tiles multiplied by its area, which is equal to 200 x square. Now it's given that if side length of each tile is increased by one unit. Okay, now let's say this square its side length is now increased by one unit so that means the new side length is x plus one so new side length is x plus one and its area of this style is now x plus one the whole square that is side square and now we can use only 128 tiles to cover the floor 
So that means in this case, when side of the square tile is increased by one square, one unit, the number of tiles are 128 and area of now the rectangular floor has to be tiled with only 128 tiles. So 128 into x plus 1, the whole square like this. Second side of equation, this is 1. Okay, so whatever are the number of tiles, the area of the floor remains the same. So that means the area in both these cases is the area of the rectangular floor. So I can write that from 1 and 2. 200 x square is equal to 128 into x plus 1 the whole square. And this is the answer for the first question where we have formed a quadratic equation and we have to write the quadratic equation in the standard form. So standard form means we have to write the equation in the form ax square plus bx plus c, which is the standard form of the quadratic equation. Okay. So I'm going to open up the bracket, this one. So this is 128 into a square plus b square plus 2ab. So this is 200 x square is equal to 128 x square plus 128 plus 128 into 2a. 2 that is 16, 2 to 4, 5, 2, 256 x. Okay, now I'm going to shift all these to the left hand side 200 x square minus 128 x square minus 256 x minus 128 is equal to 0. So 200 minus 128 is this is 2772 x square minus 256 x minus 128 is equal to 0. And for all these three terms, Common here is uh, 8. So this is 8, 9x square, 8 to the 24, 8 to the 16, and 8 to the 8, and 6 are is 48. So finally, my quadratic equation is 9x square minus 32x minus 16 is equal to 0. So this is the standard form of the quadratic equation 9x square minus 32x minus 16 is equal to 0. Okay, so this is the quadratic equation that we have. Okay, moving on to the third one, we have to find the value of x, that is the length of the side of the tile using the factorization method. So we are going to solve this using the factorization method. And for this, a is 9 coefficient x squared, b is minus 32 and c is minus 16. So a into c is 9 into minus 16, which is minus 9, 6, 9 is 54, 144. And the factors of 144 for which the product is 144. And the sum should be minus 32 is 36 and 4. So this is minus 36 and 4. So I can split up the middle term that is 9x squared and instead of minus 32x, I'm going to write minus 32x plus 4x minus 16. So minus 36 into 4 is minus 144 and minus 36 plus 4 is minus 32 which is the middle term. Okay, for these two terms, the common, common is 9x, so this is x minus 4 and here the common is 4x minus 4 which is equal to 0. Okay, so x minus 4 is common. This is 9x minus 4 is equal to 0. So that means either x minus 4 is 0 or either 9x minus 4 is 0 which gives us x is equal to 4 by 9. Okay, so we have got the values of x. So this is, uh, this is actually 9x plus 4. 
So 9x plus 4, which gives us x upon x is equal to minus 4 by 9. And the length of the side cannot be negative, so we are going to reject this. And x is equal to 4 is the length of the squared tile. Okay, so question part 3 is done. And we are going to solve the OR section, which gives solve the quadratic equation for x using quadratic formula. So this is our quadratic equation. And if we have to solve this using quadratic formula, so for by quadratic formula, x is equal to minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Let's put in the values minus of minus b is minus 32 plus minus root of b square that is 32 square minus 4 into a a is 9 and c is minus 60 upon 2 into a so this is 2 into a okay so this is by using the we are using the quadratic formula Okay, minus or minus 32 is plus 32. 32 square is 1024. Minus minus is plus. 9 fours are is 36. And 36. So 36 into 16 is 576. So this is. 576 upon 4 into 9 is 18. So x is equal to 32 plus minus root of 1024 plus 576 is 6 plus 4 is 10. 7 plus 2 is 9 and 1 is 10. 5 plus 1 is 6. So this is 1600 by 18. And I can write x as 3200 plus minus root of 1600 is. 40 upon 80. So that means either x is 32 plus 40 by 18 or x is equal to 32 minus 40 by 18. Now 32 plus 40 is 72 by 18. So this is 18. Those are is 72. So the value of x here is 4. And in this case, we are going to reject this because this is minus 40 minus 32 is minus 8 by 18. So this is 4 by 9. And this being the negative value, we are going to reject this. So our answer is x is equal to 4. And this is solved using the quadratic formula. Thank you for watching. Our next question is given that bingo is a game of chance and the host has 75 balls numbered 1 through 75. Each player has a bingo card with some numbers written on it and the participant, now this host calls out the number and the participant cancels the number of the card, number on the card. When called out a number written on the ball selected at random, then whoever cancels all the numbers on his or her card says bingo and wins the game. So this is more or like the tambola game. And uh, this is a table that's given that shows the data of one such game where 48 balls were used before Tara said bingo. Now, this is the table, and the number of numbers announced 0 to 15 was 8 times, 15 to 30 was 9 times, 30 to 45, 10 times. And because this has uh, with the 48 balls per use, so that means the frequency should be 48. And I'm going to draw this table. So, this is question number 37. And so, here the numbers announced. So these are the numbers announced and their frequency that is the number of times 
So these are actually the class intervals and these are the number of times that is the frequency. The first one is 0 to 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 45, 45 to 60, and 60 to 75, and the frequencies are 8, 9, 10, 12, and 9. Okay, and I'm going to find the cumulative frequency here. So, first one is 8, 9 plus 8 is 17, 17 and 10 is 27, and 12 is 39, and 9 is 48. So, this is N. Okay, for the first question, we have to write the median class. So, median class is n by 2 is 48 by 2 which is equal to 44 and this 24 lies in 15 to 30 so our meaning class is 15 to 30 so i can write here that the median class is the class with the intervals 15 to 30 <coughs> sorry it has to be uh, the number is 24 okay so median class is selected or uh, 24 comes after 2017 so 24th term lies is among the class intervals 30 to 45 so 15 and 15 to 30 is not the median class but it's Okay, so n by 2 is 24. 24 comes after 17. So that means 24th term or the 24th time the number was called lies in 30 to 45 after 17. So median class is 30 to 45. So this is the median class which is 30 to 45 and we have to find right the median class now second when the first wall was picked up what was the probability of calling out an even number now the even numbers uh from the numbers because the numbers on this in this bingo game were uh there were 75 numbers and out of 75 37 are even 1 2 3 4 if we count them as natural numbers for 1 to 75 37 are even so probability of getting calling out an even number is 37 by 45 so probability of even number is 37 by 75 okay let's move on to the next part we have to find the median now if you have to find the median so for let's write down the formula for the median so formula for the median for the table in the class interval form or the group form is l plus n by 2 minus cumulative frequency upon frequency into h which is class size l is the lower limit of the median class which is 30 so this is 30 plus n by 2 is 24 and the cumulative frequency is the frequency is the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class which is 17 and f is the frequency of the median class which is 10 and h is the class size which is upper limit minus lower limit which is 15 so this is equal to 30 plus 24 minus 17 is 14 minus 7 is 7 upon 10 into 15 so 5 3 are 15 2 and this is equal to 30 plus 21 by 2 which is 60 plus 21 by 2 which is 81 by 2 and this is equal to 40.5 so 40.5 is the median and now we have to find for next one we have to find the mode of the given data as well so mode of the given data 
add formula for mole. <clears throat> so before that, let's write down the model class. Okay, model class is the class with the maximum frequency, which is 12. So model class is 45 to 60. And we have to find the mode. So this is, let's write down the formula for the mode. And the formula for mode is Okay, the formula for mode is L plus this is F1 minus F0 upon 2F1 minus F0 minus F2 inch the class size. Now let's put in the respective values, and these respective values L is the lower limit of the model class, which is 45. So this is lower limit of the model class, which is 45. And the next one is F1. So F1 is the frequency of the model class, which is 12. So this is 12 minus F0 is the frequency of the model class preceding frequency of the model class, frequency of the class interval preceding the model class, which is uh, model class which is 10. So this is 10. Now 2 times F1, that is 2 into 12, minus F0, which is 10. And F2 is the frequency of model class succeeding, frequency of the class succeeding the model class, which is 9. So this is 9. And H is the class size, which is upper limit minus lower limit, which is 15. Okay, so this is 45 plus 12 minus 10 is 2, 2 into 12 is 24, 24 minus 10 is 14, 14 minus 9 is 5 into 15, 5 3 are is 15, so this is 45 plus 6, which is equal to 51. So 51 is the mode for the given data. And let's move on to question number 38. Thank you for watching. For the last question of this question paper, it's given that a backyard is in the shape of a triangle ABC with right angle at B, with AB7, BC15, and a circular pit was dug inside it so that it touched the wall AC, BC, and AB at P, Q, and R respectively. And AB is equal to X. Based on the above information, we have to answer the following question. So I'm going to draw this figure once again. This is a right angle triangle ABC with a circular pit in the center. Okay, so and if I label this, this is A, B, and this right angle at B, so this is 90 degree, this is C. Okay, then there is a circular pit in the center. So let's say this is a circular pit which touches the circle or the sides of the triangle at P, Q, and R. Now the length of AB is 7 meter and BC is 15 meter and the radius is R. Uh, it's given that AP is equal to X. So AP is X. AP is X. And we have to find uh, the length of AR in terms of X. And AP is equal to AR because so AR is also equal to X 
because these are the tangents drawn from an external point to a circle and length of the tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal. So length of tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal. So that means a p a r is also x. So this is x. Okay. We have, we have got the length of the a r in terms of x. Write the type of quadrilateral b q o r. So let's get this quadrilateral. This is b q and o r. This is o. Okay. In this case, angle r and angle q are 90 degree. So angle R is equal to angle Q is equal to 90 degree. Angle B is equal to 90 degree because it's given. And R and Q are 90 degree because the radius is perpendicular. So these are the radius. O R and O Q are the radius. And we know that radius is perpendicular to the tangent at the point of contact. So these three angles are 90 degree and if we use the angle sum property so this implies angle O is equal to 360 minus 270 sum of the other three angles which is equal to 90 degree. So angle B is equal to angle Q is equal to angle O is equal to R 90 degree. So this is either the rectangle or the square and also OR is equal to OQ and these are the radii of the same circle. So OR is equal to OQ so that means uh, these are the adjacent size so that means quadrilateral ORBQ is a square. Now if all the angles are 90 degrees so it could be a square of a rectangle and in the rectangle opposite sides are equal but in the square the adjacent sides are equal. So if the adjacent sides are equal and all the angles are 90 degrees, so this is a square. So OR BQ is a square. So this is R. Uh, so OR BQ quadrilateral OR BQ OR is a square and we have to find the length PC in terms of X. So PC in terms of X, we have to write the PC in terms of X. Okay, first of all, let's BR in terms of x. So BR is equal to 7 minus x because AB is 7 and AR is x. So BR is 7 minus x. Now BR is equal to BQ because these are the sides of the square. So that means BQ is 7 minus x. So this is also 7 minus x. Now QC. QC is equal to 15 minus 7 minus x so this is 15 minus 7 plus x which is equal to 8 plus x so qc is 8 plus x and pc is also 8 plus x because these are the tangents drawn from external side to its personal point to a circle so qc is equal to pc is equal to 8 plus x the reason being these are the tangents drawn from an external point to a circle and length of the tangent drawn from external point to a circle are equal. Okay, so we have got a piece in terms of x and we have to find the value of x. Now to get the value of x, let's use the Pythagoras theorem in this right angle triangle. So in right in triangle, this is the right angle triangle. Right angle triangle ABC. We are going to use the Pythagoras theorem x square is equal to b square plus b square. So hypotenuse is AC square, perpendicular is AB square, base is BC square. Now AC I can write it as x plus 8 plus x. The whole square AB square AB is 7 square BC is 15 square so X plus X is 
2x plus a to the whole square 7 square is 49 15 square is 2 to 5 so 9 5 14 4 to 6 and 7 this is 274 so 2x plus a to the whole square is equal to 274 and 2x plus 8 is equal to under root 274 and under root 274 is the so square root of 274 274 square root is 16.55 Okay, this is 16.55 and 2x is equal to 16.55 minus 8. So 16.55 minus 8 gives us 8.55. So this is 8.55 and x is equal to 8.55 divided by 2, which is equal to 4.2 and <clears throat> 7. This is 4.2. This is 4, 2, 7, and 5, and I can write it as 4.28. Connect the two decimal places, so x is 4.28. So we have to find, we have got the value of x and we see in terms of x or we have to find the value of x and then find the value of the circle r so we can get the value of the x so this is also for the r part and now we have to find the value of the radius so radius is equal to 7 minus x because b q this and these are all the same sides of the triangle so r is equal to 7 minus x and 7 minus 4.28 should give us the radius of the circle so 7 minus 4.8 is uh, 2 7 and 2 so is 2.72 meter approximately the radius of the circle thank you for watching